while you're down there, tie a double knot. <laughs> Amen. I still do it. <laughs> I turned to Bob Real and I said, that's the title of my speech. He said, what? I said, tie a double knot. That's the mission, that's the story that I want to share with people. And he said, I thought about it. And of course, it goes back to the Bible. If someone asks you to go with them one mile, go with them two. Mm -hmm. that's right. And that, that just has been the guiding force of my life. Whenever anyone asks me to do something, I try to do that extra mile. And I try to get other people to do that. And it's, it's a simple thing for us to do. But if we meet the needs of everyone and then say, all right, let me just take it a little extra, a little further than that. And when you see the reaction of that, it, I think it, it really uh, it really warms your heart. Oh, yeah. I won't belabor all the, oh, no, the talk good. here today, but you know, people often ask me, when I was head of the, the LPGA once made me honorary chair of the tournament, and they did a beautiful mural, asked my wife for pictures and things that they could paint a picture of my life. And people look at that, and yes, see my best friend who we used to pretend radio stations in our, in our bedrooms and think we were on the air at a young age. Now, of course, with phones and everything else, you'd be doing that. Yeah. But that was ours was imaginary. Uh, and people look at that and they see Peter Jennings. And Peter Jennings, who was on ABC for a long time, was a mentor and role model for me. And then they look next to him and they see Johnny Carson. They go, what's he doing up there? <laughs> I said, well, that... I like to think of myself sometimes as a combination between Johnny Carson and Peter Jennings, sharing the news, but doing it in a friendly style. Mm -hmm. And doing it, I said, you know, people always say, Johnny Carson was there every night. I'm there every night. It's true. It's true. I don't need to shine the spotlight on me. If I can, by my job, which Johnny Carson did, shine the spotlight on other people, the light that reflects off of them, all I need. So that's kind of my little thumbnail philosophy in a nutshell. And the music, my daughter's a music teacher uh, out in Chautauqua now. We're talking to her this morning. Uh, I can remember my mother playing the, the organ and my father and her going to nursing homes and doing church services. Their favorite song is In the Garden. And that is, that is probably the, the song that I can still here this day and get emotional because I can picture my mom and dad harmonizing and singing that song. And that's the other thing, harmony. I love harmony. And not only in music, but harmony in our, our community. We need more harmony, as we all know, all around the world. And music can do that. Uh, it does. It penetrates the heart. You have penetrated my heart today with this, and I thank you very much for it. Uh, I won't be able to save the whole lunch because I've got a well, two, two or five appointments, so I'm, I'm good for a little bit longer to hear some music and uh, share some stories. And I want to take a little video of all of you and maybe get a couple of comments because I think rather than talk about me, when I do a little story on the news, we're in that, that period, of, we're in that time of Thanksgiving. And I know the pastor is very thankful for this why and this community. And if I can get a couple of comments uh, from you, obviously, and, and anyone else that would just like to share something I'm thankful for. I was thinking on the way over, you know, we do bright spots every day, and maybe during the week of Thanksgiving, we just share some random thoughts of what people are thankful for. And uh, certainly I'm thankful for this community. I'm thankful for Lake Avenue Baptist Church down the road and, and what that meant in my life. And thankful for parents who Took me there. My father never went to that church. He was a Dutch reform. Remember the open Sio and Lindhurst Street? I think Reverend Graves finally took yeah. Reverend Graves took that church up. So that was the building. So I spent as much time in the Dutch Reform Church as I as I did there. I, I remember I'm not rambling on, I don't know, hope you have, but Oh no, you're doing good. Lawrence Hargrave. Yeah. Is a good, I know Lawrence. Lawrence is a good friend of mine. And a Baptist minister and remembers some of my early days in Mount Olivet and Lake Avenue Baptist. So he, he and I became friends again at the JCC. We would work out, beat in the locker room. So one day I'm walking into the JCC and this big arm comes around my shoulder and he goes, Don, you still a Baptist? I said, well, I said, you know, I was raised in the Baptist. I know that. 
So I was raised in the Baptist church. Mm -hmm. My father was in the Dutch Reformed church. My wife was Roman Catholic. Mm -hmm. So we went to the Presbyterian church. <laughs> now I'm coming to JC. See, I didn't ask you that. <laughs> I didn't ask you that. I asked you if you're still a Baptist. <laughs> I thought about it and I said, you know, yes. What, what's in your heart? Yes. What is your roots? What you're raised to be is, is what you are. And from that day on, whenever I see him, he calls me down the back. <laughs> Thank you so much.